Essentially, financial inclusion is, is simply how to make access to finance to the poor easier. Financial inclusion is important because it helps to contribute to economic growth. It helps with wealth creation. And the major thing is it helps to tackle poverty in Nigeria. Before financial inclusion you know, became an area of focus, we did have uh, the informal financial sector. We've always had our own way of helping people when they need money. The ESUSU, the kind of uh, local cooperatives where people bring money together. But um, that has limits to which it could go. Um, there was a limited understanding of the importance um, and benefits of financial inclusion and the sort of adverse impact of financial exclusion on the economy. And there was also no real data um, that could really sort of make people understand what the challenges were, what the issues are, the opportunities, where the gaps were. Um, that was also uh, lacking. We used to have a financial system that wasn't well structured. It wasn't a very structured one. And so CBN could not intervene appropriately in terms of which area you know, to support because we don't have the correct statistics. You know, once the regulators had a good understanding of you know, the importance of financial inclusion, um, the CBN took the lead together with um, Athena really to understand that in order for this, for us to have any impact on the levels of exclusion in Nigeria. We had to have a holistic approach that cut across um, all the regulators um, in the financial services sector. Part, part of the issues I think as far as adopting financial products is concerned is uh, the ability to understand exactly what it is that the customer needs and also to understand the priorities. In some cases I think uh, you must remember that if people don't have an employment, they don't have a regular income, having a bank is not number one priority for them. And as we um, try to uh, have these products sold to people, we need to understand also what are their income levels, what is uh, their role in the economy. We also have especially targeted intervention in the North. The North has um, sort of had it a bit on the low side, while you can boast of about 78% inclusion in, in some zones in the south, in the northwest and northeast you are talking about 25%. The big problem with the north is that the financial exclusion is a symptom of a problem. It's a symptom of a much deeper problem. Uh, it's a part of the country that has, uh, in terms of development indices, um, a lot uh, that we should be concerned about. The reason why we are here mostly is, you know, to create awareness in the minds of uh, the uh, uh, market participants, so that, uh, you know, they, as they sell their goods and services, they should be able to, you know, deposit uh, the proceeds into a bank account, you know, allow them or sensitize them to open uh, accounts in, in, in the banks with mobile money, wallets, etc. And this can, you know, definitely improve their economic conditions. There are many women, for example, who are excluded and not because they have no economic activity, but simply because they don't have access. No consumer should have to travel 50 kilometers because he wants to save 500 naira. Nobody should have to leave his house because he wants to withdraw 1,000 naira. So we are thinking lower cost agency banking, which is basically leveraging existing infrastructure, existing services, as correspondence for financial institutions. They can conduct transactions on your behalf. Um, I'll give you a simple example. In in Kano, in the palace in Kano, uh, there are so many women that basically don't and uh, never, never really had bank accounts in the palace, you know, uh, and that's right in the city. All, all it took was to get First Bank to come and set up an ATM 
in the courtyard yeah, because they just say, and, and then that's it, they opened accounts. And now they all use cards, you know, and, and all that. Everybody inside the palace uses cards, all the women. And, and, these, and some of these are very old women, traditional old women. Uh, so uh, just understanding what is the concern. The concern for them obviously was going out to look for a bank, to line up, you know, mixing around with men and all that. So you give them an ATM and, 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 you, and they get involved in financial, you include them in the financial system. Uh, it is worthwhile. To, to remember that these things should be flexible and after five years of trying something if it's not working maybe we should try something else or introduce some flexibility and maybe there's a role for the MTNs and the uh, Airtels you know in, in this in this area and maybe they could help and we could figure out how the concerns of the CPNS regulator can be addressed while we involve them in this process. Our focus areas of funding for EFINA, based on our own strategic areas, we look at the agent network development. We try to ensure that most of our projects are tied to building pervasive agent networks because we found out that you can reach out to a larger audience via the use of agents. Then our next um, area, key focus sector, is um, inclusive products and services. Under this, we have services such as insurance, micro-insurance, micro-pensions, and all of those services. These help to even reach out to those at the bottom of, of the pyramid. Then we have um, electronic payments. The world is going digital now, so we try to encourage people to use electronic platforms to transact. Um, then we, have, we focus on Northern Nigeria, women, and financial literacy, because it's not all about putting out these products and services there, but we have to make sure that the target audience are also financial literate to understand what these conditions and terms are to acquire these services. So we ensure that our grantees always have a financial literacy campaign tied to their projects so that they can explain to the masses what the product entails. DFID is working with Athena for a lot of different reasons. Number one, it's shown itself over the years to have great convening power, bringing together the private sector and the key public sector institutions and individuals that can make the difference to financial inclusion uh, and making the decision that the market needs to see inclusion grow. Uh, FCMB is a beneficiary of the Athena Innovation Grant, uh, which was availed to us in 2015 and we were uh, fortunate to actually uh, be awarded two million dollar grants uh, to be able to help us to showcase our uh, innovative products around the mass market um, um, segment of the market and basically what did we do we actually more or less showcase a micro lending solution which also has another harm of agency banking as a distribution channel to cater for the previously unbanked population uh, across Nigeria who may not necessarily have had you know, banking relationship or may not even believe in coming to the four walls of a brick and mortar bank. There are people that, number one, they, they, they have very close affinity to their market. They are traders, they are artisans. Every minute and every hour counts for them. They do not necessarily want to leave their business to go to a banking environment to go and queue up or to go and save their money. And that was why we came up with that proposition called NairaWise account at that time, which goes to the market to meet them and ensure that they save every day on the go. While they save, they also benefit from some micro lending, you know, from us as a bank. So we have about 140,000 at least clients today that has been onboarded within a space of few years of our innovation grants. Um, we launched in 2012 with uh, certain basic products, money transfers, bill payments, airtime top-up, merchant payments. And I've since evolved through partnerships and through some direct innovation as well to offer other digital financial services in the market, including a savings product, and we're exploring several others, including distribution of insurance, credit, etc. And Efina has also been very supportive financially um, on certain projects that we've done in the past, especially in the early days of PAGA. The initial pilot support grant, you know, did help us come to market more cleanly with a product that was better targeted to the market. And the innovation grant validated 
a lot of our early thinking around digital financial services. Efina have supported us on our Diamond Yellow project and that's a partnership between Diamond Bank and MTN and through that partnership we've been able to get over 10 million customers on board to have a basic bank account and they were able to open the account simply by dialing star 710 hash. They open the account, they can transact um, within the formal and informal banking system using MTN agents or um, paying direct into bank accounts or being paid from bank accounts. And we've specifically been able to focus on areas of the country, particularly the north and the northeast, that have been massively financially excluded. We all know that financial inclusion is not the same across the whole country, that there are regional gaps, and Athena has helped us to get the information we need to focus on the areas that need financial inclusion most. I have a business center. I sell recharge cards, sell soft drinks with pure water, then I'm also one of the diamond yellow agents. I help people to open just like savings accounts on their MTN line. If they want to deposit money into their accounts, they will bring it to me. If also they want to withdraw money from their accounts, they can also come to me as well. It increases my customers and it helps me to know more people. People from far away, people that I don't even know at all. They come here for transaction to transfer money and from there, they also buy recharge cards and soft drinks. So it helps my business and I enjoy it. Diamond Yellow account has really made life very easy for me. In the sense that I no longer go to bank. It's very close to my shop. Anytime I want to deposit money, I do go there and deposit money. Before how many minutes I will get the alerts and I've never had any problem with her ever since I started with her. I can equally call her my business partner because she's always helping me in my business. She knows me, I don't have that time because I teach. I go to school, I come back by 4.30 to 5 o'clock. I sell a cracker and read all year. So at the end of the day, I may not have time to go to bank or even the time, I may not meet up with the time. So what I will do, I will just give her money, please deposit this money for me. Any money I sell, anything. So it has really created that relationship between us. So financial inclusion is important to DFID around the world, not just in, in Nigeria. We've known for decades that having access to financial services, whether that's loans or credit, or possibly even more importantly, savings, payment services, can make a transformational difference to people's lives and local communities and economies. Financial inclusion is not something you do in isolation. And financial inclusion, I should mention as well, is not just a Nigerian strategy, it's a global strategy. For the very first time, we had a national document, a national commitment to really drive the change that we want to see. Now, you'll agree with me, we've had financial services for as long as time, right? Different, um, different um, evolutions and changes and things over time. But it's always been at the instance of, um, maybe, let me say, the private sector or just institutions saying, OK, I want to serve, I want to do this, this is my plan. But for the very first time, that strategy brought together essentially different partners. So you have regulators as key partners, you have government, you have the public sector, you have the private sector, and in some cases, and several cases as a matter of fact, you have development institutions all coming together with defined roles and responsibilities on what needs to happen for financial inclusion to be a reality in Nigeria. All of the regulators have come together to really understand that financial inclusion is very important and have developed an enabling environment such as so as to help the providers really be able to then come up with some relevant products and services. Some of the major challenges have to do with awareness. Um, a lot of people are living in remote areas, they're not aware of, of this, these products. Even if they're aware of them, <coughs> they don't know how to use them. So, so we have issues with, with regard to financial literacy as well. And also, are these, are these products are affordable? We've been working with some of our partners to ensure that they can be presented in a way in which it's affordable for the, for the consumer. As a media publication, Business Day, we have a, a two-page publication that comes out every week 
basically for financial inclusion. It talks about financial inclusion. We engage stakeholders, the CBN, other regulators, anyone that is related to any sort of financial inclusion. We engage them, get to get their view. How can we? CBN has a set target of 80% by 2020. So we are pushing on how can we achieve this set target and all of that. We try to we do sensitization through our publication. And we have a radio program too, where we talk about financial inclusion and we control a large audience and people give us responses. Basically, that's what we've done so far. Okay, so as a result of what others have said that we are doing as business day, uh, people have been able to know what the importance of financial inclusion is to them. People have seen the need to want to open bank accounts because we get responses from our social media platform and those that we engage one-on-one -on -one conversation with. So we can say it's a good response so far. We are not where we want to be yet in Nigeria, but we are heading there through all of all these uh, co uh, collaborative efforts. Through all our, our grant projects, we've been able to acquire people into the formal financial system. The total number of customers we have to date is about 2.6 million of which out of that number, we have about 1.7 that are active, active customers. And because we have a focus for women, we've been able to drive more women into the system. We have over 700,000 women from our grant projects that have been included. So most of our projects drive digital inclusion as well. Between 2008 and 2016, there will be 25 million more adults join the formal financial system in Nigeria. Now, whilst I'm not saying that Efina was solely responsible for all those 25 million, I do believe that we played a very important role in keeping financial inclusion top of the mind, in monitoring progress, in galvanizing systems across different industries and different participants to really focus on one key issue that we saw, which was financial inclusion, in order to help to promote wealth creation and um, reduce poverty. We'd like to thank um, Efina and, and Difford and UK Aid who've been able to support us um, to do this. Um, you've helped us to stay the course. Um, you've helped us with access to information. You've helped us measure it. Um, and what you're really doing is helping us to include more people in the financial system. Efina has played a very significant role in, in our progress, in our desire to achieve financial inclusion. Uh, they have come in different fronts and um, I will start with uh, the quality of data that they have provided the CBN and other regulators. Today, EFINA has actually become the de facto you know, a repository for figures, statistics and numbers when it comes to financial inclusion. If you want to know the number of people that are excluded or included and um, how they are distributed in terms of age, bracket, you know, gender and all that, EFINA is, you know, uh, the only source that everybody goes to, including CBN. I think for me, the future is actually more or less, you know, quite um, exciting. As a bank now, we've actually become a major uh, player within the financial inclusion um, window. And even internationally, we're now being sought after, at least by a lot of other, you know, international organizations who also want to partake, you know, in some of the things that we've been able to do. And thanks to EFINA for actually more or less showcasing us as an organization that has worth its sort within the financial inclusion atmosphere. To date, Athena has positioned itself as an innovation center. We work by targeting catalytic change and ensure that we drive innovation across the sector. Through all our various pillars and our work, we've been able to promote financial inclusion and extend financial services to our target audience. And we hope that with our commitment to this, our financial inclusion agenda, we will be able to bring more people, include more people into the formal financial system. So I still think they hold a very good position in um, being the center, being the, a voice, a neutral voice for financial inclusion. Um, and um, I think they could continue to be that voice for a very long time. So thank you to the Afina team for the great work you're doing. Um, congratulations on achieving the 10-year milestone. Uh, it, I know it's not an easy country to do business in Nigeria, but I wish you the best and looking forward to the next 10 years of Afina.